At the present time, one of the issues that's coming up a lot in um, media <clears throat> because of the war in the Ukraine is throwing Russia out of the UN Security Council. I would like to pose an objection to the idea. It would just be giving what um, the gang around Putin want to them. See, the UN Security Council was predicated on the fact that Russia absorbed the bulk of the Wehrmacht army in, from Germany in World War II. And there was a desire not to see this happen again. Most of the arguments put forward by Russia for the enormous tragedy and mistake that they've inflicted on Ukraine have been grounded in serious and legitimate points of view. And most of the people who bothered to see what they're saying realize that they're um, discussing what they're doing in the spirit of rational behavior. There's an argument that this is just a, a front, that they're just using words as things um, to advance themselves. Well, if there is such a group of people there doing that, throwing them out of the UN Security Council is sure to empower them. You see, the UN Security Council takes the international framework for world peace seriously, and Russia needs to take it seriously and needs to be taken seriously by the United Nations as well. One of the um, trolls in uh, the Kremlin, spoke, speaking for his uh, ascendancy on the heels of Putin, said that France and Germany are going to be at war and uh, there will be a civil war that will result in Elon Musk being president of the United States. Clearly, this person is um, jocular of nature um, because he, certainly he can't possibly believe that that's going to happen. But I've known some of these um, Putin asks from your um, insider clusters who zipped around the United States saying things like there's soon to be another ice age when um, promoting a song called Here Comes the Flood, meaning that they know that about climate warming, but they're telling people the exact opposite of the truth because they have some strategic purpose in lying through the teeth to everybody. Well, you know, the idea that there's going to be a civil war in America and Elon Musk is going to come to power has a certain um, resonance because of the way that um, the January 6th uh, overthrow attempt promoted uh, Donald Trump. And there's a certain cast of um, leverage that can be accomplished in using words as things, in using reasons as things, to just, you know, shake things up and make it sound like you're on top and like you know the difference between right and wrong when you certainly do not. So... You know, when you look at the insiders of the Kremlin, Putin is a great hero to many, many people for some interesting and sound-minded reasons. For example, he has a wry intelligence about Russia's past. He embraces Alexander Solzhenitsyn as a great Russian writer, despite the fact that Schultz and Aitzen stood on the different side of the divide when it came to freedom of expression, freedom of speech. Well, Schultz and Aitzen had some words that rang 
deeply in my conscience from day in the life of Ivan Denisovich, how hard it is for a warm man to take seriously the concerns of a cold man. You see, anybody who's had to walk a long distance in hunger or has been homeless for a day, much less two years as I was, knows that there are people who are unable to fathom the suffering that their negligence is inflicting. And so there's a lot of reasons why the UN needs to be considered all of us, because the UN is addressing the issues of right and wrong. In America, we seem to be on the run from our own shadow. We seem to be running around on highways, trying to escape loss and damage that's being inflicted by the fossil fuel in industry on innocent people abroad. And there are certain things in our education that have um, gaps that can be filled in with incorporation of new knowledge. I was watching a program about Yellowstone. They introduced wolves. And the wolves um, harvested some of the deer and led to a new natural balance that brought back beavers and, and all sorts of new re restoration of balance. The rivers even were thriving. It was, it, it's a beautiful chain of events that um, knowledgeable enhancement of the wilderness resulted in prosperity for the wilderness. Since this is the sort of educational thing that we need to develop in our understanding of. But the way they phrase that prey in balance with predator reminds me uneasily of the mutual of Omaha episode I saw where they tied up a crocodile and threw it into a lion's den to watch them fight. And this was, of course, was brought out the holy man burning incense at the University of Pittsburgh, the nature of reality, the Swami knows sorts of people. So it's very sad when um, people can't tell the difference between civilization and um, the balance of uh, prey and predator in, in nature, natural um, environments because we have become a predator and we're justifying it by saying we're protecting civilization but this is being done by people who avoid echo schools who avoid engagement with mature realities of moral responsibility they can't be allowed to escape their involvement in um, the UN Security Council. If you go back to um, Ronald Reagan's era, you find the same problem. The Geneva um, meeting where Palestine was recognized by the UN Security Council Resolution 242, Israel's right to exist was recognized by Palestine, was refused admission to um, New York headquarters because of the Palestinian representatives was sabotaged by a locker jet at a time when one of Donald Trump's speechwriters, an Israeli extremist, was on the radio at KDK in Pittsburgh hiding his voice and pretending to be Abdul the terrorist. This was for real. They were found out for robbing the museums. They're the reason I ended up homeless for two years. So what we have is a situation where Ronald Reagan's administration didn't want anything to do with the UN. The UN Security Council was forced to go to Geneva for these hearings after Mikhail Gorbachev. Don't get me wrong, I have questions about what happened during the AIDS um, mystery. But when they took down the Berlin Wall, they were doing us a concession to what we wanted. And yet the Bush administration started carping at them 
as being even more hostile and dangerous. That's not fair. And the outgrowth of the situation is based on rational premises of people who have reason to be afraid of that sort of encroachment surrounding them. So, you know, it's important to take and keep in mind that some rational issues are at work in Russia's vocabulary and representation of what's happening. Um, when we look at um, my cheat sheets, we find that not only am I breaking new ground, but I'm humbling everybody with my knowledge. You know, one of the issues that's been particularly thorny for Seattle's um, network of UW dialectical brilliance has been the fact that Larry Flint sided with Yoko Ono and it advocated as a team player to protect and service the people who were behind the AIDS mystery. Now, this is what they call being a team player. You get recognition that way. They have these ideas that are very, very sad pertaining to um, Paul McCartney's ego tripping. Like, he doesn't like the name Your Blues for the song about I Want to Die. And you imagine, you know, Beatle Maniacs who, who said the wrong thing in his presence and kick themselves in the head over and over again. Oh, if only I hadn't said that, he would still like me. You know, and they have this Mysterian idea of, you know, should I or should I not say the magic words, you know, or intonations, or did I, do I have what it takes to be a Swami in the cult? You know, Peter Hamill said that he, his voice was going to mirror what Jimi Hendrix did with the guitar. Well, by the same token, Robert Fripp's guitar does what Granny Clampett's voice does when she sings. I mean, these people are maniacs for their own egos, and they don't care about anything else. It's, it's, very, it's very sad and to, to take it at face value. But they're also, what is said about Nietzsche is that he contradicted himself because there was energy in contradiction. Reasons and words are just things. So you get into this thing about going with the flow. Well, the hippie era went with the flow of the AIDS attack. I have no idea why. It was a ridiculous um, hit on social reality. He said, Amanda Harcourt mongered with Peter Gabriel. But, you know, the issue had to do with the deviant spin that some people put on um, mass issues, you know, where oh, they record someone saying, kiss my hot lips, the hot lips issue, the idea of scandal. My father used to call kicking out my brother from Ecuador because he got drunk, the execution of Segunda. We know that when somebody gets caught with the Lewinsky at the White House, that scandal brings an end to their public relations, their public life in office, their public life. But that doesn't mean they don't no longer have the right to exist. But the, what they, we've done is taken this ending of public life and turned it into an ending curtailing of the right to exist. Certainly, I am not going to endorse that. And they had this creepy thing about copyright being um, parasitic towards the people that they actually betrayed. Well, I don't want to get into taxation of my home crowd. I mean, I, I, I do think the brothers on the block in Seattle have the right to be wised up about what's been going on without... Um, unnecessary taxation. But I also have worked very, very hard and never been thanked. And the reason are um, heaped in mongrelizations of theoretical formulas. You know, the formulas for rejection by the Beatles is just one of the supernatural, superstitious issues 
that pertains to this. You can look at the cosmic guidance of the people in New Line Cinema who used images of Zell and Lucarelli for the lead hobbits. And they had a Eunice, they had a, a vaginal image for the Eye of Sauron. I'm not saying that Tolkien being very Catholic and medieval wouldn't have gone along with that. What I'm saying, though, however, is they read into it. There's misogyny at work in that. And what these people have done has created like an arms race fetish around the idea of the right of black people to self-defense. Okay, Ida B. Wells was reported as saying black men should have Winchester rifles to prevent lynchings. Well, anybody in their right mind would support the sentiment that black people had the right to defend themselves against lynching by force. But then the, the hardwired guys come in and they say, oh, but the lynchers will have something even more powerful than Winchester. So here's what you want to buy from me next. And they get out there, you know, shopping the uh, catalog. And, you know, it just goes on and on. It's, and it, we have to get social dynamics education going. Not just social studies, but social dynamics so that people can see the simplicity of the way that the truth is being bypassed. We have to know what they're going to do next. For example, AOC or somebody from the left might come in and say, well, communities that have fewer guns are actually safer. Well, they're going to angle and go out and start shooting up communities that have no guns to out us that rap. And we have to be on top of these things because ultimately there is such a thing as right and wrong and moral morality. There really is. And people who don't want to live with guns, they don't they shouldn't have to be terrorized. They shouldn't be terrorized by um, disingenuous reasonings of the cosmonauts loyal to uh, the coming French German civil war for Elon Musk or whatever's going on in these heads of spinners, you know, the Trumpy Tempu and these that go back to the terribly disingenuous framework of ideas that surrounded Bush's theory of America as the world's policeman. You know, the United Nations are the people who are the world's peacekeepers. And, and if you want to call them policemen, whatever you want to call them, I really don't care how you put it. But their primary power is outcasting. Their primary power, so you might say, well, they want to outcast Russia by throwing them off the UN Security Council. That's just going to get, go in these um, pimps of logos what they want. We have to hold Russia to their highest self-representation by keeping them on the Security Council and telling them that if they're going to be leaders, they should start acting like leaders. Now, we know one of the things that they've had going for quite some time is me. What they've had going with me is that they wrote an interrogation script. These are people who, for whom the idea of a one night stand is a bribe under the table, it's just passing a $200, $200 under the table at the hotel and giving a wink. They don't think anything of the morality of it, but they wrote an interrogation script based on, and they use this moral hypnosis. You're supposed to be absolutely, and why? Because what they're doing is they're hardwiring around the idea that people have a right to life, to, to promote the idea that if you have, have any kind of scandal to your world, you, your right to life is out, okay? Your right to public office might be out because you're in the public eye and people have sensibilities. But, you know, those Jesse Jackson having an affair is none of my business, and that's the bottom line. It's pornography, human right. Well, it's a civil right. People can go down and purchase over 18 magazines. We can discuss that, but we shouldn't be writing interrogation scripts based on murder to um, collect on the moral hypnosis in cold blood. 
and um, false light. Because, um, you know, what they're really doing is, is Charles out of the stuff. You know, you're scrawny and we can make a mockery of you. Mock, but back in the USSR was revolution number nine. We're mockers, right? We can, you know, Moscow looks like mock, but we look out. I mean, when David Bowie made a mockery of Jesus, it's because that's what David Bowie was. You know, and you can't expect them to lead on the notions of civil morality. They're playing games. They, the who is John Galton, the Invisible Man stuff, all the Wispensky business that they've come up with. And they have these Washington mokes from the VA and from UW Dialectical averting any kind of um, sensible investigation into any of this stuff because we don't have social dynamic education that can explain to people that more hypnosis is used in New York City to loot and pick people's pockets. It's a scam situation. We need people who are reputable, experienced, including Russia, in charge at the UN. And we need them to live up to the premises, live up to the potentials and enough of this stuff. There's not going to be a civil war in Elon Musk is going to be president of the United States. It's, it's a joke. But but he's, he, you know, don't give guys like that what they want by throwing Russia off the Security Council. Hold them to the responsibility that they profess.